Hello out there. I hope you're all keeping well and amused. Oh, do you miss the classes? It will be great to get back again when the time is right and see you all again and we'll do some more work together. Until then, I put another little demo together. Now this is very basic, very basic watercolour indeed. I've gone back to square one, almost minus square one. Uh, I know lots of you out there are very good at watercolour, very brilliant with your wonderful techniques. But this is just a basic intro. So if you're, you know, either very stupid or you just love to go back to the bare boards thing again, this is for you. Um, the technology I'm using on the PC is very challenging. It's more challenging than the art, but I'm mastering it. So there's a good side to everything, isn't there? Good side to everything. Sit back and enjoy. Be patient and see you all again soon. Looking forward to it. So here it is. Very basic watercolour indeed. Thank you. Bye bye. Well, here we go. I hope that you don't think I was being sarcastic in my introduction. It did sound kind of cocky. Look, we've got two types of paints here. We've got the tubes and we have the pans or half pans in the box. Let's try a tube first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze out my bright red. That is actually the name, believe it or not, this bright red. And I'm going to melt it down with a very cheap brush. The brush is fine. I've never had a problem not spending a fortune on a brush. Get some water together and dissolve or melt. Now what I'm doing over there is something I recommend you never ever do and that is to put water into a well first. Never put the water into the well before you put the paint in. You just don't have control over the way that the paint uh, behaves. I'm now going to melt the paint or dissolve the paint down into a usable consistency, which I always think of as single cream. Double cream is when the paint comes out of a tube. Single cream is when it's used, used, useful to be painted with. So being tedious, I'm going to do it in real time and keep on until I think the paint feels to be the right consistency. Now this takes a minute or two and I've always found it kind of relaxing and it gets me into what I'm doing. So there's no problem with having to hurry the process up. Take your time. Here comes the paper. As the man said, here is the paper. Let's get in there a bit and I'm just going to put my paint, which I believe is the right consistency, onto my paper. And there it goes, a lovely big patch of bright red. And that's a fairly even, even application. I'm quite happy with that and I'm going to let it dry. What you don't ever want to do with paint is to paint it a lot. Watercolour paint doesn't like being overpainted very much. Okay, I'm now going to technically wash my brush by using lots of water and diluting my paint down. And there, look, I have a nice tint, a pink from the bright red. It's the same paint, the same colour the water changes the colour of the paint. So if I want a lighter colour, um, I don't add white as you do in oils and, or could in acrylics, um, I just add water. Sometimes though it's perfectly acceptable to the powers above us 
to the authorities to use white. Uh, you can use white in the way all the great watercolour masters did in the Golden Age. You can use white or other, other colours, blacks, even to tint or shade, if you want to. It's up to you. And that's another tint with more water added. So I've got a really pale, fairly transparent uh, colour. The transparency isn't necessarily that significant. What you want is possibly an even colour. You want an even covering of paint. And I'm trying to clean my brush with this bright red. Uh, it's a good idea to get most of the colour out. Particularly if you're going to use a pale colour, say a yellow. A uh, good idea to clean the brush as well as you can. Not a good idea to let it dry with the paint in. Uh, with oil paints you'd use color, uh, brushes for each colour and you can clean them at the end of the day because the paint doesn't dry fast. I am now going to use uh, a, a half pan colour from my little box, um, Scarlet, Scarlet Lake. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Scarlet Lake. And I'm going to tediously again uh, take as long as it takes to get it into the well. There it is, running in like blood. Not too thin. I don't want to dilute it much. When I add water to my brush to remove the paint, I make sure I don't pull that brush back out of that paint too soon. Otherwise, I won't be getting the full, rich red. I want the full color. I want to work with the full color. This is why tubes are quite popular. They come moist, partly dissolved, um, so the job's half done. With half pans, they're very they're convenient, they're lovely, they're traditional, uh, but they do take a little bit more time. A little fussier. Nothing special about that, though. Uh, relax about that. I enjoy this part of the process. And if I was working on a particular image and I wanted, say, yellow ochre, a green or blue, and uh, a red, I would have those colours out. Uh, pretty much before I started um, and then I could just push ahead with my painting and there's my Scarlet Lake from the half pan going on and again this is very simple stuff of course most of you will know all this already but I just there's no harm in running through it and it is my first watercolor demo so I'm going to do the basic thing here and then I'm tinting it and I'm putting it on and I'm leaving it, pretty much. Um, and there's a little bit of water going on the paper. Uh, as you can see, the, the brush still has plenty of red in it, really. And there's the red going on the wet paper, running into the water. And it does make a difference. Uh, you ought to try these things. If you don't uh, ever moisten your paper before you paint, it might be a good idea to try it. Some pigments really like it and others don't. Um, yellows are always happy to go on to damp paper, moist paper, and many blues are too. Ultramarine might split, but that's a, that's a nice thing to happen. It's not a big deal. And there's a bit of a tint going on to a moist area again. And it feels different to paint into a moist surface than it does onto completely dry. So you should always try both methods. Don't just stick to one, experiment. Okay? So there they are, they're drying nicely. Ah, this is a little bit of lifting now. Even with a good strong colour like a cadmium, you've got a good chance of lifting the colour back off the paper. Even years later, you can always dissolve most watercolour paints, unless they call themselves permanent. Um, they may not be movable, but that one was. I can actually paint effects in that, in that way too. It isn't just about repair. I think this is Prussian blue here. I'm going to now demonstrate uh, the traditional just wiping the paint off the end of the tube. It's important that you don't leave an airspace between the cap and the paint. Try to keep the paint right to the top of the tube. If you leave a big air gap or even a small one, 
The paint can dry up in the tube. We've all had it happen. It's frustrating. Something to be avoided. Dissolve that paint down as well. And I'm going to demonstrate a simple wash. Uh, the other methods, the other applications were not washes. Uh, we were actually just painting straight on to get a good flat even surface. Many of the pictures that we work with uh, are based on oil paintings or acrylics. Uh, Rupert Bear, for example, always needs mostly good flat surfaces, for, especially for his clothing. And you typically paint on evenly with a creamy paint um, and then you get the result. This is me moistening the paper first with a tissue. You can get quite a lot of water on. Um, you know, you can almost can't overdo it. And this is me now going to apply the paint in a traditional wash method. So I tilted my board and my paper so that the paint runs down a little here. Some people would tilt it more. And look, it's quite going on quite uneven. It's a good demonstration of how a wash can look uneven. Uh, here it goes. Yeah, there we go. Just going along, not too much, just enough to cover the paper. And this is on a wet surface. Depending on the pigment, they all vary so much. Depending on the pigment, uh, the wash varies in quality and success. Blues are always a little tricky, but it's traditional that you have a blue sky in a traditional watercolour, a big blue sky, possibly mop out some clouds, not allowed to use white, uh, etc. Uh, it's drying unevenly. That doesn't really bother me very much. I, I don't uh, attempt to be in complete control of watercolour paints. It's a 50-50 exchange. It's, it's, a, it's a, an agreement contract uh, the paint does what it wants to do and you try to get it to do what you want and it's 50 50 this is the blue going on to dry paper um, this you could call this a wash I suppose but it isn't a wet surface and it takes a little more application it's got to be scrubbed on just a little harder whereas the water will soak the paint up off of your brush most of the work that I do in watercolor doesn't require this technique it just doesn't I'm not a great believer in painting backgrounds and uh, producing a kind of wash effect I've never found it strictly needed and they will dry. We can watch paint dry together. I don't know what what am I up to now? What am I up to now? Um, okay, I'm just trying to paint out to see how dense it is. Uh, yeah, hmm, interesting. Okay, okay, let's finish with that one. And the next, uh, the next uh, item, animal, vegetable or mineral is, it's another wash. It's a dry wash with a diluted blue. Practice makes perfect. If at first you don't succeed, Looking better already. Look at that, it's easy. Remember, this is beginners, beginners. This is pre novice stage, perhaps. Be confident in your painting. Don't hang about, but don't panic either. Don't rush, but don't leave it too long. If I let that dry now, uh, the wash, the evenness will be compromised. It will have a different tone or texture where I stop and start again. So that's drying. 
and this is I'm laying the paper down now flat again and I'm applying the paint flat there is no movement it's the paint sits where I put it I'm not chasing it down the page it's all good fun it's all good fun this is painting for painting's sake there isn't really an image here is there not well not one that you would say you can recognize particularly but I like it it's nice to paint like nice to apply colors deep rich color and that's nice and even it's going on like ink like printer's ink there it goes so I'm fairly happy with both of those they've pretty much got evenness that I can be happy with remember watercolor is arguably the most difficult medium in the world and you don't expect to get the same effect of evenness and control that you get out of a roller when you're painting the kitchen wall flat even consistent watercolor is inconsistent it isn't really the artist's job to make it consistent it's the artist's job to work with what watercolor does I think it's lovely and dry it's a beautiful dry surface so there it is so and the next next object is item is what we're going to do now uh, yes we're going to talk about the paints briefly all the paints are made from different things they're made from minerals vegetables that's plants and they're made from chemicals some of them are plastic some of them are dug from the earth and some of them are made from plants the cheaper paints the Cotman's are all chemical they are all substitutes for the original uh, forms and sources for the pigments and look I just can't resist it here's that red here's that red going in here into the blues oh it's lovely and look at we've got there um, this is especially for Colin who is a big Rothko fan uh, Mark Rothko the famous American painter there we are we've made a Rothko isn't it Rothko isn't it beautiful uh, yeah I like it I like it now if we want to make a color darker we don't put black or gray or brown into it we put its complementary color into it and the final little demo is I'm using some of Mr Hooker's green and I'm mixing it with the red just off shot I'm mixing it with the red and I'm going to make a deep red a brownish red by mixing the red with the green and this will naturally deepen the red color it won't change it too much unless I overdo it so any moment now here it comes here's yes nearly there stirring my brown paint or my dark red paint it's coming it's coming yep this is only the second move I've ever done you know I'm getting the hang of it be patient be patient any moment now it's coming yeah there it is and there's my deep red that's lovely that's just by adding hooker's green to my bright red I get that gorgeous deep rich almost maroon color by the way the uh, Spanish for brown is marron marron maroon uh, this is not really a brown it's a deep red I think there it is and that love I do like that I do like that color it's a, like an earthy carmine color and I'm going to do something now which you should never do you should never do what I'm going to do now this is a demonstration of what not to do and that is to keep painting it to keep on and on painting this color until it screams for mercy there it goes whack away try to paint it before it dries keep it going 
no need for this at all. Always let just the paint dry naturally. From the earliest point you can, relax about it. I'm still going at it. I've added some water now. The weird thing is though, the paint won't misbehave very much. It does seem to not mind. But it, this is not what you're supposed to do. This is not necessary. It just isn't required. This is overkill. So, on the note, on the last note of overkill, uh, that's it. Thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure, as usual. And um, if there's anything of help in this, well, let me know, because there isn't a lot going on here, but it was fun. Remember, we're all beginners at heart. Good luck and cheerio.